Thank you very much, Lisa, for the warm welcome. Um, my co-speaker and I are very honored to participate today to the fourth edition of the Digital Social Summit in Stuttgart. My name is Adelaide Chopin, and today I will moderate this panel discussion about how can we fight the digital divide in rural areas. And to answer this very important question, I'm happy to have today's speaker from all over Europe. As, uh, let me share my screen. Um, as you can see on this uh, map, we are joining today from Germany, but also from Belgium, the UK and Sweden. And before we dive into, um, into panel introduction, uh, let me tell you a few words about our panelists and the two European projects they are part of. So they are part of Cora and COM3. And what are Cora and COM3? They are two interact projects that gather municipal, um, re sorry, rural and rural municipalities and rural regions from the North Sea area. So here on the map, you can see the yellow spot. There are all the regions that are part of our projects. And this region have started to work together because they want to tackle the same challenge. While they are praised for the quality of life, yet they face the same they face some uncertainties to stay attractive places to live, to work, and to invest in. And they all identify digital transformation as a way to open new opportunities for their citizens and for their small businesses. And by digital transformation, I mean, of course, digital infrastructure, digital public services, but most importantly, digital skills. And our discussion today will focus on this last dimension. Through these two projects, the goal is to enable everyone, citizens, small businesses, but also administration, to gain the digital skills they need to thrive in a new connected world. Together, they test a solution, they develop training modules and guidelines to help organizations and regions to create a more digital inclusive environment. So here for the background information, now what can we expect from, the, from today's panel discussion? So first, we will take a few moments to, uh, for each panelist to briefly introduce themselves and tell, uh, tell us a bit more about their background. And then I will kick off the conversation, asking questions to better understand how our panelists help make, make their region more digitally inclusive. And then on the, on, the second time of our time, on the second part of our time today, I will give you the opportunity to ask questions to our speakers. So feel free to use the chat function and uh, Lisa will gather the question for us and we will answer them at the end of the session. So I hope you are all ready. Let's get started. So before our session, I asked all our speakers to send me a picture from their regions, not only because they live in very beautiful regions, but because I wanted to see how digital skills look like in their region. Uh, and I will start with Liz. Liz, you sent me not only one picture, picture, but many pictures. I know the choice was a bit difficult. Uh, so please tell us, about, about your, tell us a bit about yourself and why did you decide to share this picture with us? And the picture which should come in a moment. Here you are. Thank you, Adelaide. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Liz Price. I'm a senior research fellow at Lincoln International Business School, which is at the University of Lincoln um, in the UK. Uh, the university um, is based in the city of Lincoln, which is in the east of England in a, in a rural county called Lincolnshire, um, which has a number of um, challenges regarding broadband connectivity. Um, for us, um, digital skills in our region means supporting um, SMEs and nonprofit organisations, um, many of which are in traditional sectors, and our focus is on improving the operations of those businesses through the use of digital technology. And as you can see on the slide here, the, um, the example I'm going to talk about today is um, supporting businesses by working with students at the university. Um, to explore digital um, technology solutions to their problems. Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you, Liz. Let's go now to Belgium. Vicky. 
Yes, good afternoon. Thank you, Adelaide. So indeed, my name is Bieke Blaublomme. I'm a project manager technology and digital transformation at an intermunicipal organization called LEDAL and based in, uh, in Kortrijk, that's in the southwest Flanders part of uh, Belgium. Um, as an intermunicipal organization, we want to create together with our 13 cities and municipalities in our region, a better environment and region to live, to work and to experience. Digital skills in the COM3 project for me means creating um, a safe context and environment for companies in which they can learn, think and get inspired on how to become a more digitally driven organization and this way increase their competi competi competitivity. <laughs> Sorry, in the country uh, pilots, um, we focus on working with data, uh, actually, in order to, to, to develop a more sustainable, eco-friendly, future-oriented processes, products and services. And to achieve that, we start from a blank page and we think together with the companies supported by data experts on how they can transform digitally towards more data-driven companies. Adelaide? Thank you, Vicky. I suggest that we now go to come back to Germany. Laura, you are joining us from North Germany. Thank you. A warm welcome to all of you. Uh, my name is Laura Kramaike and I work as the manager for rural development projects at the municipality of Amthüttener Berge in Schleswig-Holstein, northern Germany, of course. As uh, Amthüttener Berge, we are a collective municipality. It means we manage uh, 16 rural villages with about 15,000 inhabitants and current projects include improving uh, digital marketing for regional farmers, developing a digital senior citizens portal, and of course, teaching uh, digital skills, uh, which you can see on this picture. I shared this picture because for us as a digital region, digital skills mean uh, being just a click away for adult people. And that's why we have developed regular digital courses and meetups for adult people. Here they can learn to, for example, write emails, they can get to know helpful apps and receive advice on safe surfing. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And let's go now even more north to Sweden with Katarina. Hello, all. Uh, my name is Katarina Nordmark, and I work as a project manager at Värmland County Administrative Board. It is in Karlstad, uh, Värmland, Sweden. Uh, di digital skills in my region, uh, it means to work with uh, digital inclusion in Värmland. And in this case, more specific, helping elderly people learning how to use digital tools. It can be computers, iPads, mobile phones, and also to see the opportunities with digitalization. And here you can see some seminar I will tell you more about later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. Let me just stop sharing my screen for now. Okay, thank you all for the uh, the introduction. We all see that you focus on different um, um, target groups and you uh, you decided to start uh, the digital transformation with different target groups. My question now is very simple. Why did you decide to start working with these people? What did you think that they need a digital skill most? So Liz, let me give you back the floor. Why did you decide to work first with SMEs from traditional sector? Okay, so in, in our county of Lincolnshire, we found that um, generally there is a, a low take up of digital technology and the county performs poorly on innovation. There is a low spend on R&D, for example, compared to other areas of England. Um, and there are a number of reasons for this, really. Um, one is related to the legacy of poor broadband provision. So we find that in the most rural areas of Lincolnshire, still only around 40% of premises have access to super fast broadband. So that means that some of the businesses and organizations are further behind when it comes to adoption of digital technology. Secondly, um, our economy is dominated by what we call these traditional industries. So by that, we mean industries such as um, agriculture and food processing, health and care and manufacturing and engineering, but more 
more kind of traditional rather than high tech manufacturing. And we have um, a small but growing digital sector in Lincolnshire, which could support some of these businesses and organisations to innovate. But that is based mainly in the city and across the rural areas. They're quite poorly served when it comes to support for adopting digital technology across the area. More than 99 percent of businesses are SMEs and around 90 percent are micro businesses. So employ fewer than nine people. Um, And that means that they don't really have the resource or the time to dedicate to implementing digital solutions in the same way as large companies do. We also have a growing nonprofit sector that operates across areas such as health and welfare and the environment. And many of those are small companies as well. So this is the reason, well, those are the reasons why we've decided to focus on traditional SMEs and and, um, organisations. Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you, Liz. And I think BK in uh, Belgium, the situation, the situation is a bit similar. Or at least you decided also to focus on SMEs. Indeed, that's correct. Uh, Adelaide, uh, also in the Laidal region, over 95% of the companies are, are these uh, SMEs and they are spread across a vari- variety of uh, sectors in our regions. Um, some of these SMEs are located on the Laidal business parks because that's what we also do with our intermunicipal organization. Other are located in SME units or some are in the city periphery or in rural areas. And Laidal wants to strengthen the full region, the total region, um, to make and keep it interesting for businesses to be located here and also to stay here because we also um, yeah, experienced some uh, um, companies moving away of our region. And not only high-tech and ICT companies, but also there are a lot of family companies, smaller family companies. So we, um, our aim is to increase the digital development for all of these companies. Um, and we inevitably link this uh, towards in our uh, activities towards collaboration between a vari- variety of companies, smaller and larger, or more developed, less developed companies, but also between companies, local authorities and the research institution in the region that is better known as, of course, the quadruple helix we apply. Digitalization automatically and inevitably also means the uh, generation of much more data. So in our activities, we have been focusing on data and um, the company can either do nothing with the data or they can become more aware of it and look at the potential um, and valuable, uh, the, the value of the data for their activities. So in the country uh, pilot, our uh, pilot is called uh, the Imagineering of Data, and it focuses on three concrete cases in which we develop new products, services, and uh, processes built on the use, exchange, and sharing of data between these participating stakeholders. And the three cases um, in using the data is about energy sharing, um, data for more efficient use of space and space neutrality, and one circular uh, topic, namely the reuse of leftovers. So by bringing together knowledge, expertise, and good experiences on the one hand, but on the other hand, not avoiding the related barriers, obstacles, and challenges of working with data, we try to increase the level of knowledge and skills within the companies and in this context of the three uh, cases, so that they can get to work and apply this knowledge and experience to their organization activities um, also on the long term. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. And I think, Laura, in Hüttenberger, you had a, a, a different focus. You focus first on elderly people. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. Um, we have taken the past and uh, still take actions to strengthen the digital skills of local politicians, businesses and students. Finally, however, we have decided to focus very strongly on the group of elderly people. Um, in 2018, we as Amtete set up a digital agenda. And this has resulted in many digital services that support our citizens in their everyday lives and especially when they interact with us as an administration. But it is very important, we think, that we take uh, all citizens with us um, when it comes to digitalization and when becoming a digital region. So 
um, as a rural area, um, we have hardly any real industries, um, but we have a high quality of living and elderly people are our largest group in need of digital skills. And we think elderly people can benefit greatly from improved digital skills. And the skills can make things easier for them in everyday life, but at the same time, there are very, very little offers for learning digital skills, except from family or neighbors, maybe. And because there are no offers or hardly any offers here in rural areas, um, but the need is so huge, we as a municipality see our responsibility uh, in creating these offers for digital participation. Thank you, Laura. Katarina, do you want to tell us more about the situation in Sweden? You also decided to focus on elderly people. Yes, we have. Uh, and in a study that surveyed digital exclusion in Sweden, uh, inhabitants over 65 years of age were identified as a high risk group due to their lack of skills and trust also in digital tools. And uh, we have another study that shows that about 400,000 seniors in Sweden do not use the internet. And we started working to increase digital skills amongst the elderly population because we wanted to ensure that they do not lose out on opportunities offered through the digital technology. And uh, yeah, changing attitudes and promoting the benefits of digitalization are important goals. Uh, access to hardware and broadband is not enough. To, to avoid digital exclusion, because the seniors must be skilled, skilled, they must be motivated to use digital tools, and they need also to understand the benefits of, the, of a digital society. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. Yeah, I think now we understand better uh, your motivation to uh, increase digital skills for the specific groups in your regions. My next question is very simple. So, um, how did you do that? Uh, what for creative solution did you come up with uh, to reach out specifically to these people? Uh, for your case, um, Liz in Lincolnshire, uh, how did you reach out to uh, small SMEs from rural sector, from traditional sectors? So at the University of Lincoln, um, we developed a project called the UOL 4.0 Challenge, which basically is a project that's based around challenge-based learning. Um, we have um, undergraduates who are studying operations management at the business school, and we pair them with local businesses that have a challenge within their business that could be solved using digital technology. So each semester, we pair a group of um, undergraduates with a business. The business um, talks to the student about the nature of their operational challenges, and the students spend the course of the semester using the tools and techniques that they have studied in operations management. And at the end of the semester, they come up with um, some proposed solutions. Um, we also work with our government partner on this, which is Lincolnshire County Council, and they help promote the project to the businesses. Um, so one of the, um, the challenges we face, I guess, is reaching out to um, rural SMEs who are in need of support um, uh, beyond those who are... Um, often interested in it so those hard to reach SMEs so we've 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 used um, Lincolnshire County Council who are the kind of main business support provider in Lincolnshire to help with that so for us the project has really two um, main aims the first is to connect um, businesses with new ideas that could help improve their productivity and access to their markets the second is for our students to expose them to the world of business and to allow them to work on real business problems, um, which will have really um, help them when they come to find employment themselves. So in terms of impact so far, we've done some follow-up research and we found that around half of the businesses that engaged with the project were able to implement a um, solution that the students had suggested. Um, one example is a non-profit organisation operated a food bank in Lincoln and they adopted um, the students' um, solution, which helped them to identify 
more efficiently when surplus food would become available at local supermarkets. Another um, physiotherapy practice was able to implement an online booking and patient management system following solutions from the students, which has led to them saving time and resources in their practice. We've also found that the COVID-19 pandemic has provided a real catalyst to businesses seeking support. And really, since March 2020, we've found that businesses have been seeking ways to help them engage with their cons- customers online and have more of an online presence. Um, and so some of the suggestions the students have come up with have included things like short video promotion, augmented reality, and those are continuing. Um, we've had a number of nonprofit um, businesses also seeking support in areas such as affordable legal services, mental health, counselling, um, and so on. Um, So I think really what we found is that it's been um, a useful project really for linking the students with um, the local SME population who've been able to benefit in a number of ways. Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, it's very interesting that you can already see the impact of your activities. And I guess it's open to job opportunities for these students who are involved in this project. BK, I wonder how you do that also in your region. How How do you embark SMEs uh, on their digital transformation. Indeed, yeah, embarking is not a very easy thing to do. We experienced uh, some difficulties to reach out and really involve companies, especially in times of, of COVID. Uh, they had really other challenges sometimes to face to to yeah to be able to survive. So we needed to come up with um, a good and uh, yeah creative approach to to track their uh, their uh, their attention and also to keep them on board of our um, data um, pilot. So our creative approach was really in um, the the design thinking methodology that we applied to our imagineering of data pilots. Um, So it's um, not starting from a concrete problem. We, uh, the other way around, we rather started off from the data itself and from the need of companies to be more um, active and to do more with their own data combined with the value from other, uh, uh, the the data, sorry, from other companies, uh, governmental data, data and other available open data sets. And by applying the design thinking methodology and the triple uh, diamond model, um, we have uh, followed an iterative journey of eight workshops together with the companies in co-creation. So together with these employees and representatives of in total 16 participating companies and organizations. Um, So in the past year, we had already had a few um, inspiration and brainstorming sessions, then we had an an idea selection phase, a workshop on definition of interesting potential cases to do do things with the data, and um, we now evolved towards the development of three prototypes on each of the three uh, already mentioned topics. So from numerous data ideas in the beginning, a few interesting concepts were defined, then we expanded again to a series of concrete feasible cases, and then filtered again and prioritized to select the three final and also achievable uh, cases. So for us, this method has resulted in a group of companies that is now currently working with the data on these three subjects and topics in which the companies themselves have been able to take control and to decide themselves and together with the other uh, um, uh, companies. And as a result, they are now more committed and they really see themselves as the owner of the of their topic. And consequently, because of this journey of co-creation and uh, the design thinking methodology, the companies are now much more uh, aware of uh, the need to improve their knowledge of data and its potential applications than if we had started off from the other way around from a concrete problem and just wanted to find a a solution to that problem. So we think that this approach really keeps the the companies interested, interested, keeps them on board board and gives them the good uh, knowledge to to take with them uh, in the the future. Thank you, Bike. Yeah, it's a very imp- uh, interesting approach. Laura, I wonder, uh, now back to Germany, I wonder how d- did you manage to get in touch with these elderly people and motivate them to, uh, to acquire new skills? 
Um, with the uh, Interreg Northy Region Cura program at our region, uh, we try to create a very widespread approach on digitalization. And um, we organize courses and meetups for digital skills, but we are also developing a platform with information and communication offers especially for elderly people. And in our opinion, it's not only the seniors, the elderly people who have to adapt the digital world. Also, the digital world uh, has to become more senior friendly. And uh, yeah, as a result of our activities, um, we are experiencing a significant improvement um, in the acceptance of digitalization. Um, first, the killer argument in our committees with our politicians was always that digitalization excludes. But now we are actively working on that and working to change that. And in addition, um, we can come in contact with a new target group by teaching digital skills especially the group of elderly people, of course. And those are a target group that otherwise have hardly any contact with us as an administration. So now we can win this group for more participation and generally become more citizen friendly. And because as an administration, um, we want to develop uh, solutions that citizens really need and that's impossible without participation. So we really profit uh, greatly from um, these courses and meetups and digital skills in a way we haven't thought about before. Thank you, Laura. Katarina, how is the situation in Sweden? Yes. Uh, in Värmland, Sweden, we started uh, a small project. We called it Go Digital. Uh, <laughs> the project was aiming to increase digital inclusion amongst the elderly population in Värmland. And during 2019, uh, we held like 40, 47 training courses together with the Swedish Telia operator Telia and the municipalities in Värmland where pupils, uh, school pupils, uh, 13 to 15 years old, trained senior citizens in the use of ICT tools. And the overall goal of the project was to raise seniors' digital competence, of course. We wanted it to, to raise it to a basic level so that they have access to relevant information and services and so they can take part in a democratic society. And in return, uh, the seniors will learn to appreciate the benefits of digital technology, hopefully, and will be continuing to and participating in the digitalization of their communities and Värmland as a whole. Uh, and the results from this uh, digital inclusion projects, um, Go Digital, showed how like a relatively small effort can have a great impact on the individual and those also on society. To, to use a new technology and its services often requires, uh, I mean, in addition to pure knowledge, also a curiosity, a will and a commitment to participate um, and for the participants to become comfortable with all the new. And we gave them that in the seminars. Thank you, Katarina. So here on the table, we have a university, we have also local and regional authorities, and you all came up with very creative solution to increase uh, digital, to yeah, improve digital skills in your regions. Um, and you uh, developed this solution based on the specificities of your region. And I'm wondering, what can we learn from you? Speaking here from Ger from Stuttgart or from other regions in uh, in in Germany, um, especially here at the digital digital social summit, we have a lot of civil society organization, and I wonder if you have an advice for them. How what would it be? How can they learn from you and uh, help make digital digitalization a bit more inclusive? Liz, what would be your advice? Um, so a couple of things that we've learned from working on our project. The first one is how valuable it is to work in partnership. So in our project, we, we as a university work with a government partner and also with businesses. 
And we found it a struggle at first because we found that we all speak slightly different languages. We use different terms. We have different objectives. But as time has gone by, we found it to be a really useful learning exercise. Um, and we found that we've been able to... Um, that organisations within the partnership have benefited in unexpected ways. So as one example, um, some of the work the students had done identified that short video and augmented reality were emerging areas that businesses should be focusing on. And as a result of that, our local government partner decided to commission workshops in short video and augmented reality, and they became the first business support provider, government business support provider to do that in the country. So actually, we were able to take the insights of younger people and have that directly inform business support policy, which has been um, really well received and um, very popular. The other thing I would say specifically for civil society organisations is if there's an opportunity to work with your local university, then do consider it because um, the opportunity to work with young people provides um, the chance to perhaps have a fresh perspective on your operations. Often these smaller organisations are caught up in the day-to-day -day running of their of, of, of the organisation. They might not have time to sort of stand back and think about what they could do differently or how digital technology could help them. Um, young people... The, the young people that are involved in our project, they weren't studying digital technology, but they are digitally savvy and they just have a different way of looking at things. So they often came up with really interesting questions. And often within universities, lecturers are very keen to work with nonprofit organisations on many different projects, not just business related ones. So um, I think that would be my main, my, my main recommendation. Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you, Liz. Uh, Biki, what would be your advice, speaking from Laidal? Um, I think in the, the digital transformation as a whole uh, and as a, a challenge for all of the organization, is it a company, is it a, a, an, an um, academic institution or whatever, Digital transformation is everywhere, but the, the topic of digital skills, as you also mentioned, Adelaide, is, is very important. And to really achieve the digital transformation, the digital skills need to increase accordingly and also simultaneous. So on the other hand, digital skills also is a very yeah, generic and broad topic. Digital skills, it's, it's, it's very wide. Uh, and therefore, from my experience, I would uh, for sure advise to first analyze the situation in your organization and define very well what the actual needs are in the context of these digital skills. Uh, prioritization and selection of one or a few key topics will help then to define the actual goal you want to achieve and you are able to achieve and also will help to decide on how to achieve this goal. Um, also, as Liz mentioned, I think use your network is also good advice. That's also what we experienced by bringing together uh, local and regional authorities, uh, schools, um, uh, intermediary organizations, and the companies. You can all learn from each other, and and uh, yeah, the, the 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 value will will rise, and and each will help be able to help each other. Uh, and but last not but last but not least, I'm also convinced that uh, digital solutions and digital skills need to improve specific for example, administrative or other processes for staff and for employees. So digitalization does not and cannot mean more complex procedures, but needs to make the work and life of employees, of people more efficient and easier uh, than it was before. Thank, Thank you, you. BK. And I think it goes in the same direction as what you said earlier, Laura, that uh, digitalization should, be, um, should make everything citizen-friendlier. What would be your advice, speaking from Hüttenberger, for a civil society organization? It took us a while to understand that digitalization is most successful together with digital skills. In digitalization projects, there is, as I experienced on one hand, usually this very demanding and often expensive software development. And founding has to be acquired, developers must be supervised, deadlines must be met. 
goals must be achieved, of course. And this requires a lot of expertise, a high level of commitment and a lot, often a lot of money. And the issue of digital skills is quite different. Um, first and foremost, it takes time and soft skills and you have to approach people, understand their fears um, and take time to teach them how to use a new solution. But despite the differences, uh, software development and teaching the skills to use the software are closely linked, um, at least when it comes to digitalization at an administrative, administrative level um, or at our municipality. And while, of course, not everyone needs help in using new software, elderly people are very important multipliers in our region. They tell their children and grandchildren about it. And they also so give important tips uh, for improving and expanding software. And they are loyal users themselves uh, once they have been won over. Um, and if no one needs it, even the best software is useless. And that's something we experienced. And um, good and complete digital readiness require, requires many things, including digital skills. So my advice is why not go a little deeper into training and knowledge transfer for your next project? I think it's worth it. Thank you, Laura. Uh, I will now give the floor to Katarina. I think you are already... Said, I'm very yeah. sorry to interrupt, but there have been a lot of questions already in the oh, chat. That's great. So maybe we can interrupt for a second. Um, I'm going to read them out to you. So one is from Michael, and Michael would like to know how many people or companies of your target group you are able to reach or to meet. I guess maybe Liz, you can answer for Lincolnshire. How many university uh, companies yeah. did you yeah, work with? Yeah, so so in our project, I think the project has been going for around three years, and we've we've engaged with twenty companies, and that probably doesn't sound like many, um, but because we have um, we have probably two hundred students per semester, and we want to ensure that we set we put more than one team with each business because not all students will come up with implementable solutions so we want to improve the chance of a quality solution coming forward and we are seeking to expand it and hopefully in the future make it university wide so we have interdisciplinary teams perhaps from engineering computer science and business and ultimately they will be able to perhaps add even more value to to the local business population thank you liz and um, bk do you want to tell us a bit more about how many companies you were in yeah, able to involve um, at this moment uh, around 16 but it's still growing uh, companies are actively involved and this is by means of um, yeah participating in our workshops so that's the eight workshops but also the work in between um, but this this is a mix of, of companies smaller and bigger it's uh, also the intermediary organizations it's a few municipalities and also some experts that are um, yeah supporting throughout this this journey but as i mentioned it's growing because as our our topics are now more focused it attracts again new companies so that is an interesting thing to do is while you were uh, advancing that you just open a new call uh, and yeah allow other companies to jump in if they want because some in the beginning were interested but were a bit uh, yeah um uh, yeah, wanted to wait for a bit, and once it becomes more concrete, they uh, they uh, yeah they jump in and they can uh, get on board. So sixteen, and now and hopefully still more in the coming months. Just the beginning. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I guess we answered the first question, Lisa. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, two more. Um, actually, Anna asks, um, how can we ensure to further close digital gaps in rural areas in the future? What are sustainable solutions? Who wants to take this qu very important question? I guess it depends on which uh, target we group we want to start working with. Laura? And yeah, very short answer. I think uh, it needs commitment from the municipality administration, um, city. Uh, it really needs commitment and 
little bit of money for that. And for our municipality, the answer would be uh, provide staff to to provide help. So um, have people who work in this um, area and go maybe not so um, already known um, solutions and, and stuff, but just try to have stuff for new problems. Thank you. Anna, did we answer your questions? Perhaps okay. I can add Adley, to that for companies. It's interesting that to mix the, the, the sizes of companies, the location of companies, so that uh, smaller can learn from the bigger, but bigger companies can also learn from smaller. And therefore, it doesn't, uh, like for digital transformation, it doesn't mean where you are located, that you are behind or uh, a front runner, so that they can, that they're brought together in, in a project to collaborate and and to exchange and yeah to to exchange knowledge knowledge and experiences together thank you elisa do we have any other question other mm -hmm. question from the audience yeah one more um, from jan do you see similar problems in all your contexts what potential do you see for scaling up of the solutions you are developing how can one support such scaling politically and in brackets, such as funding programs and more? It's a very important question, especially in the context of interact projects. Uh, DK, I saw that you were nodding. Do you want to give your thought about this? Now I can only confirm that it's a challenge to uh, yeah to upscale your solutions, and I think uh, for our region we can only mention that from the country and the Quora projects, there it's uh, like seeds that have been put in the ground, and uh, they will grow now also into new interreg projects and other programs. So I think indeed you need to look out for the the right funding but um, I think I can also mention that the, the network again is very interesting because because of these projects you you learn about the other organizations that are uh, um, offering also certain services that can help uh, to to uh, yeah to um, to close the gap and to have digital transformation and digital skills for everybody so know your region know your organizations companies and the needs for the people that are living and working there and then find the right prog programs, projects um, and yeah, build new projects around the, the, yeah, the scale up of uh, the solutions. Thank you, BK. And I think that Lisa uh, um, kindly just, let us yeah. know that the time is up. So I will just take a few uh, seconds to thank, uh, to warmly thank all our speakers, BK, Laura, Liz, Katarina, you've been wonderful speakers and uh, wonderful ambassadors for your regions. Thank you also to the audience for your, your question. We really appreciate this exchange uh, with you. If you want to know more about uh, our project and our um, all the regions, you please go to the, our website, ruraldigital.eu. You will have all the information on every region, region and hopefully also find some inspiration and training modules that you can uh, try out. Thank you all very much. Thank <laughs> you.